All right, everyone, and welcome to everybody who just joined us. My name is Jonathan Mallard, and I lead the onboarding team here at Benzinga. And what I would love to get from each of you in the chat is um, any trades that you've been looking at or whether it's something that you're happy that you're in or a trade that you're stuck in because of the market downturn and be very specific in the chat about the type of trade that you're in that you want Nick to take a look at. I know, you know, with the downturn in Bitcoin and other cryptos today, um, I know Nick was actually waiting for it to go below, uh, I think it was 28,000. He can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but but yeah, let me know what, what trades are you in? What would you like him to cover today in terms of tickers or companies? Uh, because we'll definitely have an opportunity for a little bit of a ticker time here on the webinar. Um, and if you're on Zoom, there is a Zoom chat probably towards the bottom of your screen. I see you there, Ash. Welcome from Kansas City. I see a William from Arizona. Let me know. I know there's a lot more people in there. All right, Boris, SPX, and SPY. We'll definitely take a look at, at the S&P 500. Disney, Neo. What up, Eric from San Diego? Awesome. Well, good to see you all here. And uh, go ahead, throw those those companies or those trades into the chat, and uh, and we will get to that soon.
All right, everybody. Uh, Nick will be here in just a couple minutes. I was just on the phone with him and he was wrapping up some trades and I see a lot of good comments in here. I'm looking at Ahmed, uh, hard time on Weeble, how to apply the credit put spread alert sent to us from the legend. That's that's perfect, Ahmed. Uh, we'll definitely get to that. Uh, GM or BMW, Boris has, has all the tickers. <laughs> we will not have a shortage of tickers to cover. So thank you, Boris. Uh, we'll see how many we can get to there. Ronald, probably the most specific uh, with five dollars and 750 17th of june on best um so we will take a look at those contracts williams looking at tesla aiden says my strangles made money today a bite in the opposite direction of what i was expecting well hey as long as it moves enough for the strangle right um and Ozzy, we'll definitely get you some good trading ideas today. Herbert is long. The short queues, 52 calls for June 24th, 24th expiration. How would you trade out of this position? Yeah, a lot of people are stuck right now. A lot of people are trying to trade out of basically bad positions. So you're in the right place. Hey, um, hey there, I, Nick. Hey, hey. Right on time, sir. Let me... Uh, let me get this um, music out of my headset. How are you doing? Um, good. So a pretty busy day and pretty strange for a lot of people because it goes this way, it goes that way. It, uh, it's hideous price action and it looks like it's the end of the world, but it's not really. But, you know, it is scary and daunting. So I don't blame anybody for freaking out. I'll turn on my camera in a second. I was just uh, doing a couple of things. So I don't blame people being confused. Hopefully we can shed, shed some light overall as to what's going on, just to settle everybody's nerves. And then um, <clears throat> we'll see if we can uh, try to make sense of it and trade it. Absolutely. And what we would do, what habits we do, what we would avoid and things like that. So... Awesome. And so just so everybody knows for the structure of today's format, today's title is called Little Known Options Trading Tricks to Make a Fortune During Market Downturn. Now, there a lot of these tricks, I mean, this isn't rocket science. It rolls right off the tongue, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Little Known Options Trading Tricks to Make a Fortune. Um, so this isn't, we're not, we're not doing yolo trades nick has a clear repeatable pattern and whether you're a beginner or an experienced trader we're going to have some things that you can take away from today and either protect your positions that are struggling right now maybe learn how to think about those positions that are in a rough spot or how to make more money consistently and even profit off of this volatility and downturns in the market. So Nick, what I was thinking was that we could start with just your rules for how to trade in high volatility or potential bear market situations. And then we have a whole slew of specific contracts that people are asking about. I kind of gave them a heads up. Hey, if you're hurting right now, what do you want us to cover? And we have a whole bunch of stuff in the chat right now as well. Yeah, that works for me. That works for me. So let me see here. I can chart this, start sharing my uh, video if you want. If you really Perfect. want to see my mug, I am uh, like going to the gym or something kind of a look. Uh, so let me see here. We'll go for that. Hey. Awesome. Good to see you, man. Got Good that cool you. racing jacket on. Well, it's, it's, it's cold in my house, believe it or not. I live in California and it's not cold out there, but for some reason, my house is always cold <laughs> and it did rain today in California, which is what, <laughs> what is happening here? Southern California, no less. Wow. So, um, and I'm going over, I'm coming off of COVID last week. So, um, playing catch up. Now I have my voice back. I don't sound like very white anymore. So now we can speak better. <laughs> No but more I do have a radio. net break, which I think is a byproduct of that. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is share my screen, if you don't mind. And this will be SPX. I think this is the one. Share. Are we looking at this screen? We are. 
All right, so you're looking at the screen that I share all day. So a little bit about myself. I'm not from Wall Street. I'm an engineer who figured this stuff out. So I may not use the same terminology they do. And I try not to get too wonky with the details. Um, I don't try to bury anybody in the jargon. And instead, I try to elevate our knowledge and confidence to say, I know what you're saying with all these fancy words. Let me reword it in plain, simple English. So if you can follow that logic, that'd be great. And as far as uh, my style, I like to use options and I prefer selling than buying. Because if you heard uh, people say, um, most options expire worthless. Okay, great. So I wouldn't want to be selling them. I just want to be buying them. I mean, I wouldn't want to be buying them. I just want to be selling them because the buyer always loses or most often loses. So therefore, I want to avoid that situation be on the seller side of things. You can't do that without proper habits. Uh, it gets pretty dangerous. Um, so today, we'll, we'll touch on that. And as far as me working with Benzinga, I don't work for Benzinga. I work with them because I like the team and their stand-up company. And we've been doing that for over 10 years. So we're doing something right. So that's a little background. The service itself evolved from very basic just sharing ideas to um, having a chat room so we can discuss those ideas we shared to then um, me adding a live room, which is me sharing my screens all day, every day. So which means I'm tied up to this thing all day, every day, and I have 300 people with me. So today, after the market, we played a game of Wordle after I shared it, and then we played it communally. And of course, we kicked Fanny, and we even played that quadruple version of it, and we won that one too. So it's a good community. There's a lot to learn. That's the focus. There's a lot of opportunity to profit from that. Today, we did it 25% trade last half hour, and it didn't need anything to win, and it wasn't a credit spread. Hmm, intrigued. Uh, so, and, and um, the opportunity to profit along the way with the learning, but focus one is learning, learning new tricks, me including uh, adding to my bag of tricks, which... Uh, includes trying to guess with the earnings. Let me check on something. Oracle, is it up or down? Oh, up, sweet. 69, how about that? So we discussed Oracle before the close, and I said, I made my guess in writing. I said, given what I see in the open interest, I think it'll be up is easier. It has upside pressure to 69, I think. Upside pressure to uh, 67 and a half or 68. Uh, so maybe a 68, uh, 69 call diagonal would work. And I think that will make money tomorrow. So anyway, so we are doing good work that way. But still, the focus is on learning uh, and avoiding mistakes and seeing how we can profit along with the pros and beat them at their own game. All right. Now, let's talk about overall price action, if you want. So I'm going to go to a daily chart of the S&P, which everybody knows, the SPX. Every candle is one day. It's about one year's worth of data. I will hide this. We have more landscape. Uh, so this is about one year's worth of data. Clearly, we are falling out of control. These three candles look left. You don't see anything like them, up or down. If you scan back, there's nothing like them. There, These three up that kind of look like them, not quite. These three up very much look like them, which were wrong. I hated the rally in 2020 of October and the summer of uh, 2020, which is also uh, equally as aggressive. Where was that? Um, these? Yeah, this, this rally was very aggressive. So this drop is very aggressive on extreme fear and for no particular reason other than the fact that, holy crap, what is the Fed trying to do? That's what we're scared of. Holy, yeah, they could break the market. Why on earth are they doing this? I don't know. They either see something we don't, or they're either idiots or they're criminal. I don't, it might be a blend of everything. And they're just sheer panicking. He did this in 2018 and Wall Street said, let me test your resolve. And we crashed in Christmas of 2018. And he said, okay, I was wrong. I had a headline on that one. <laughs> I'm not making this stuff up. Uh, it's here somewhere. I hit it for use. That was today's um, heat map. Um, anyway, the headline was uh, that he gives up, basically. Anyway, it's not here. Okay, so that he gives up on that fact. And he was raising rates. He said he was on cruise control. And Wall Street said, oh, yeah, let's see what you can do with that. And they crashed. 
And notice how all the rhetoric now, all the experts, Diamond, uh, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, uh, all of them, I haven't heard or read a headline about anybody optimistic, anything. Everybody is, is now, it's now like they're outdoing themselves. Who can say the worst? And Goldman Sachs last night, overnight, came out and said 3,100 or 3,150 or what it was. Everybody talking. I said 3,600 when it was way up there, uh, right after we lost the floor from February. Uh, okay, so that was Bullard's flash crash. This was Ukraine flash crash in February 24th, exactly a month later. And then we did this stupid thing. And then when, when we lost this one here, I said 36 is the target if we're lucky. And uh, I thought I was aggressive in the downside target. I said, it's not necessary we go all the way, but it could happen. And now Goldman Sachs last night or overnight said 3,100 and something. <laughs> so uh, buckle up, buttercup. Oh, <laughs> Goldman Sachs says 3,100. I wonder if the, uh, you know, the trading desk at Goldman Sachs gets a peak at the headline before it comes out from the news desk at Goldman Sachs. There used to be a rule against that. I don't know if it's still there. Just you wonder. So if you're rushing to buy puts, I can get you, I'm guessing you're probably buying them from Goldman Sachs because they probably already loaded up on them. Um, mind you, I can't prove any of this. It's just me being a non-Wall Street guy. Maybe I'm jealous. So these are extraordinary drops based on fear from rhetoric. The rhetoric. There's nothing bad yet in the market. Um, companies are still reporting excellent numbers. Yes, even the reports where the stock falls 60%, it's a beat. It's a it's an increase in sales in 30% and sometimes 150%. Upstart increases sales 150%. It's like going to a pizza shop and said, I did three times the business this year. And somebody says, nope, I should sell your company because you are um, not as profitable as I thought you would be. Um, nope. How about you go with the actual facts ra rather than what your um, guess is from now? What's going on now? Markets are closed. Uh, so people are anticipating bad things. So I think the reaction on Wednesday is binary, meaning we don't know which way it's going to go. Gut says up unless. So there are two elements for the Wednesday reaction. One is what he does, 50 bips or 75. I had no idea that there were people thinking 75. I didn't read anything about it. Everybody who said 50, 50, uh, 50 point hike. And today, no, yeah, we're talking 75. I'm like, ah, that's new. <laughs> we never talk about 75. You said 50, 50, six months of that, and then we'll talk. Uh, and for him to, somebody suggest that it might be 75. Well, that wasn't baked in, in the scenario. So they're afraid as to what he does. That's number one. If he does 75, except, expect more downside. And secondly, which is, in my opinion, the more important piece, what he says, which won't come out at the headline, he will, the statement will be released, Steve Leisman will read it, and then he will come out and read the same words without Steve Leisman's uh, comments. And then uh, I think half an hour later, by that time, we will have an open session of questions and answers. And that's where he's studying policy. That's been a habit now. He makes the policy, not really policy commitment with the statement, and then he goes off the board and says the real policy in the question and session answer, question answer session. So he said, if he says, yeah, we did, we're on track to do two. And after that, we're just going to have to sit back and see the data. That's all he has to say. Sit back and see the data. What's wrong with just seeing the data? I'm not telling him to stop. <laughs> I'm just telling him to tell me that you're looking at the data, buddy, that you're not just raising, 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 raising just because you want to raise for, for, for fudge sake. Just tell me you're looking at the data. That's all Wall Street wants to know. And I think we will have a relief pop. Don't chase it. Just know it might be coming. Anyway, that's the big picture. The companies are still doing well. Until I see a deterioration in the sales, then I would re-rate the fact that, okay, the future might be tougher in the, uh, coming down the pipe. But we can use ref reference points. So if you go to a weekly chart, you can slow down the action. We're still looking on the S&P. This is before COVID. And we are still, what is that, 20%, maybe 13%? Uh, oh, 9%. We cut, a hair, we cut some into it. So 9% away from the COVID area. So these candles will matter. These two candles, if you draw a box around them and you catch the falling knife inside that box, I think you'll be fine. That's my initial attempt. Now, if, if it bounces there and it loses this box, we're going down to here, which means we have zombies in the street. 
we have something completely different. It is possible, unlikely, but possible. Okay, so what's going on now? They're selling rallies. Here's a rally, they sold it. Here's a rally, they sold it. If we rally, that's your next move. What do you do? You sell it. The, the least you can do is not chase it. So the next rally will be under pressure to be sold. If they sell it back down to the low where it started and lose it, you just got trapped. That's how they call them bull traps. Whoop, snap. And then you're stopped out. Rinse and repeat. Those are bull traps. So rally, sold, rally, sold, rally. Assume it's going to be sold. Be optimistic, but assume it's going to be sold. This way you won't chase early. Then if it does get sold and it gets to where it failed before and you want to try along there with a tight stop, fine. Then you're actually using the potential support as it's meant to be rather than buying at resistance. That is not right. And how do we know that the selling is over? It's not a flashpoint in time. Uh, hopefully it will rallies and it gets sold off and it holds like halfway through plus or minus makes another attempt at where it failed from makes another tiny bit higher high and then a, a higher low and a higher high and suddenly the descendant descending pattern goes sideways for a little bit and starts to building up a little uh, path upwards and then you know and when you beat a really high profile level, then you almost for sure know that we're out of the sell the rally mode. The machines will keep behaving the way they have been until they are told otherwise. Uh, meanwhile, rally sold, rally sold, rally sold, rally sold. Every rally is being sold to a degree or another. So next time this rally is over to 4,000, if we pass 3,900, um, don't be uh, chasing it at 3,100. So if it does this, ignore all the lines. And it's going to hit resistance here. And what happens on the retest? And it comes down to here and it loses that. The downside is massive. It's as big as the, the, the stomach here. So I won't put it there. So I'm not confusing them with my own lines. Uh, so keep in mind, keep an, keep an open mind to the worst case scenario, even though you don't want it to happen or you don't think it will happen. You have to be open that it's there. They are selling rallies. Rally, sold. Rally, sold. What are you going to do with the next rally? Are you going to buy this? If you, go, if you bought it tonight and tomorrow you get a rally, sell it. <laughs> you can re-engage long because that's what's happening. They're selling the rallies. What are these? And uh, do you mind interpreting that, uh, <laughs> that middle finger in the bottom Oh, right? the middle finger? <laughs> 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 I think it's better suited on the... On the, on the uh, where is it? Oh, they disappeared. Where are they? Okay, let's go to daily. I was drawing a trend with middle fingers, I think. Uh, so. Oh. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we have fun during the day. I parked, I parked some pictures out here so I can reuse them and not have to go hunt them again. Um, so I have Cornholio here somewhere uh, lying and hiding, probably on the SPY. Um, so what we do, what, what's easiest? The easiest thing to do is during these days, we have no conviction. You should know, you should not have conviction. I'll tell you why. Very simple fact. Very simple fact. At VIX, that's the VIX. The fear index. Sorry about that. I have fat fingers today. This is the so-called fear, fear index from the CBOE, right? It's met, it gets its levels from the pricing in the options. So if the options are expensive, the VIX is high. So it's the chicken. It's not the egg. So it's a reading on what the market makers are pricing the options at. The market makers, who are they? They're anybody that sells something in options is a market maker. If I go out and sell a spread, I've just created a little market for a spread. So I took the risk. Somebody else is taking the risk differently. So somebody said, okay, I'll, 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 I'll take some of this. I'll take some of that. Maybe I'll make money on it. And I'm the guy selling them uh, those spreads. I'm making a tiny market, right? So there are people that do this on a large scale. So if you buy a call at the money and she buys a call, a put at the money, somebody sells that put and that call. Assume it's somebody with a big bag of money that knows what to do with the market and knows how to manipulate markets. If you make that assumption, then the only way they lose is if price goes outside of that range. If you sell the call and the put right here, the, the straddle, the only way you lose if something unusual happens, right? So it's in, it's in their best interest to keep everything tight or to know exactly where prices are not going to go. 
In this way, they price the options based on what they think the volatility is. So if they think, if they're calm and they see nothing in the, in the pipeline, they'll offer low prices for options. There is no need. Ah, okay, what do you want to pay? A dollar? Okay, I'll give you a dollar. But if they know that there's hmm, coming down the pike and uh, there's a headline for this and headline for that coming up, guess what? Oh, buddy, you want that one? You're going to have to pay up. I need to cover my stuff because the range is going to probably be bigger than this. So they want to make their money. And you'll see it reflected in the VIX. So if you see a VIX this high, use it as plain, simple English that the market maker is nervous about things and is expecting a big move. If they're expecting a big move, then they are missing a piece of the puzzle. And so should you be saying to yourself, I am missing a piece of the puzzle. The pros don't even know what's going on. They're nervous about things. They're nervous about things because they have a few question marks. Therefore, uh, I should have question marks as well. But I love Apple. I think it's going to be doing blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. Apple doesn't trade in the vacuum. It trades inside of a collection. In fact, I think Apple is the biggest risk on the market right now. What did he just say? Let me show you. Don't take my word for it. Uh, by the way, that was the target I had on Apple. And I'm pretty sure when I drew them, um, I raised some eyebrows. And this is these are three targets. And it's right there. Now, it doesn't mean it goes to the fourth target. It just means... I call these tag teaming bears. One line leads to another. And on smaller uh, levels, timeframes, you will see them more defined. But now I zoomed out. So, But wow. here's, what I, here's what I wanted to show you. The risk on Apple. This is pre-COVID levels. Well, wow. Yes. This is still, uh, it, last time I measured it was 40%. Yeah, it's still 40%. So, right? Let me double check. Yeah, February 2020. So there is plenty of area for Apple to fall through just to get back to pre-COVID levels. Not that it needs to, but I'm just saying. Amazon did this. CRM did this. Uh, Salesforce.com, CRM. PayPal, Square did more than this. Uh, Roku did this. Netflix did this for good reason. The other one's not for good reason, for just giggles. Uh, who else? Uh, you know who didn't do this? Microsoft, not to this degree, though. Uh, Google, so the two tickers of Google, Google and Google, and Apple. Those are the three that sticks to mind that have the most risk. Well, combined, they're probably, I'm going to guess, 30% of an index combined. So they're hefty companies. Did Tesla do this? No, not even close. Holy crap. No way. Tesla is like miles away. It's like three times the price. Okay, but that's a special case. But Apple is too far up. Doesn't mean it needs to sell off. It just means... So you can think about it two ways. There is no way Apple is going to forty percent fall 40% from here. If you say it that way, that means we're close to a bottom in this correction overall market. If you say, of course, there is a way, all it has to do is this and this to happen. And if that's the case, then we will fall another 15% in the indices and Apple will probably lead it down at a rate of two to one, which is possible. Somebody will say something, oh, Tim Cook is doing blah, blah, blah. I don't know. So highly unlikely scenario, but it is probable. So you can't discount it completely. I think short term, I think Powell is not going to be criminal about it. He's going to say something that is not as scary as people are expecting. I didn't say he, he's going to say good things. That's not what I said. He's still going to say bad things, but not as bad as people imagined it. That's my guess. I'm not a political guy, and um, I'm not an economist, and neither is he, which is pretty weird. Having um, be, Being the head of the largest economy, economy on the planet, you think they put an economist in there. So... He might say things that are scary, but not as scary as people imagine it. What if people are already pricing in uh, 75 bips and then saying that the next one will be 75, not 50, and saying we decided to do two more right away. So that's three points in the next four meetings. So Goldman Sachs will be right about doing seven this year or eight. There's a lot of uncertainty all because of a very violent, borderline criminal Fed behavior. They didn't fess up 
on their mistake, saying it was um, transitory. They created the inflation on purpose. They told us we have two mandates. We want to create jobs in this uncertain time during COVID. So we will have to ignore inflation. You don't have to, you chose to. So they said, we're going to ignore inflation and pour trillions of dollars into this thing and uh, to create jobs. So they created more than enough jobs and they created incredible inflation. And they kept telling us, you idiots, it's transitory. And then he had the balls to, two times ago to go out and say, oh, let's retire this word. Okay, I'll retire it when you say, sorry, I was wrong about the transient. And now it's a freaking panic and let me kill the economy I just built. This doesn't work. Something is wrong. I, I'm not an economist, but I'm not an idiot either. So um, you explain that to me. Maybe they'll write books in hindsight and explain what we were missing. What data point was he seeing that we're not? Well, so, it'll always be interesting to look from the future back 20 years or 10 right. years. <laughs> so what can you do? What can you do? Right. What can you do in the meantime? We, here we are trading. So every day we get together, we go to, the, for example, the SPY, and I'll go to a one minute chart and we go to 30 second charts and we try to trade the action as actively as we can. So you're saying, oh, we can't do this. Not everybody has the time to do that. No, but, um, you know, we can also take some trades that don't require uh, surgical skills. Sorry, I have a neck ache. It's killing me. Uh, so, for example, somebody said, how would you trade? Give me the levels on Tesla just today. It's like, okay, uh, first question out of my mouth, what would it be? So I'm, I'm going to open up the, where's the chat room? Where's the chat, chat, chat? See if I can see it. <laughs> Nine trillion dollar balance sheet. Yeah, but that balance sheet started earlier. So now I'm catching up with this, um, with, the, with the chat. Okay, so where is uh, my first question? When somebody says, uh, what do I think of Tesla? And say, okay, are you long? No. Do you have a position? No. Are you short? No. Okay. Now we can talk. Are you looking to get long? Yes. What's your time frame? Notice the questions. I want to know what's the mindset. What's the time frame? What's the position currently? Because if he or she were long, this this one was uh, I think both a he and a she, two separate people. Uh, so it is. <laughs> I have to specify. So if it is um, a new position, first rule: I don't go all in, if at all because of all the question marks I told you. If the market maker is not sure of him or herself, then how am I, Nick, be, uh, how can I be sure uh, more than the market makers that are in control of the market to a degree, better degree than me? So I have to leave room, some drop powder, and for error and doubt to add later or not to have made a bigger mistake as I normally would. So that's number one, not all in. Number two, leave room for error. What does that mean? However you trade, if you buy shares, okay, then you don't, you can't leave room for area except not to go all in. If you usually type buy three shares, you buy one. Where's the fire? Uh, we'll talk Bitcoin in a little bit. Crypto. That was the discussion today in the chat room. Uh, something I started in November, which was bang on. I, I, not a lot of people give me credit for it, but, but it was bang on and I'm on record. So I'm good with that. So in this Tesla scenario, I said, are you able to sell spreads? They said, yes. I said, well, then my ideal situation would be to go out a little bit, a few weeks outside of this mess that's coming up right here. <clears throat> God, I can't believe how late in the year it has been already. What? It's crazy. I'm just thinking about it. Wow. Uh, so, and sell a put spread and leave room for error. So I discussed something like selling a 560, 550, or 550, 540, five, uh, $5 put, uh, put spread down here. What does that mean? It means that I don't know if Tesla is going to rise in the next couple of weeks, but I'm betting that it doesn't fall through 550, 545, something like that. I don't remember the exact spread, and I don't want to give it as a trade alert here. The concept is I sell risk down here, and I collect money. And if I'm right, and Tesla doesn't collapse then I make 25% of my risk. So I'm risking a, a certain amount of money and the reward is 25% of that money. So it's the equivalent of me saying, okay, I'm going to buy shares worth of $100 and I'm going to make 25% of that or shares worth $1,000 and I'm going to get a rally of 25%. Uh, this one does not need a rally and leaves room for Tesla to fall another, uh, what is that, 15%? 15% before I get in trouble. And even then there are things to do to get out of trouble. So uh, do, you have, uh, do you have your E-Trade 
practice platform up? I do not. Dang it. I knew I, I forgot to wait. I might have it. No, I don't. <laughs> Just because uh, there are some really good specific questions in the chat here but just in let, terms me, of let me the see if i can do trade. it while you're talking I'll, I'll do it so what are the questions see if i can address them so the general question was um ahmed saying hey i'm having a really hard time on weeble how to apply the credit put spread alert sent to us from the legend aka nick um oh, so <laughs> he, he just wants to kind of like walk through what that looks like on the brokerage some of the other questions while you pull that up um uh Rolando is saying if spy breaks below 374 would you expect a lot more downside um uh where are these other ones there were some other ones that were more specific Enrique said I sold some 121 Amazon puts with expiration in September should I buy them back or roll over at a later date um and then okay so we will change into uh hot potato mode so this is the practice platform from e-trade i'm not recommending e-trade by the way uh, it has a lot of but i mean it's good enough to practice so we can tackle the first ones first uh, how about with the last one i heard amazon you said amazon what uh let's see i'm scrolling up here uh 121 amazon puts he's he sold them with an expiration in September. Oh, September. Okay, so uh, are they here? Hey, Lloyd, is this my Lloyd? Uh, oh no, it can't be. Okay, so uh, let me see here. I'll talk. I'll talk about uh, about that in a second. So September. So let me describe the situation. One twenty one. Wow. Okay. So the, whoa. Um, how much did you collect per contract? Not total amount. So when you sold the one contract, how much did you get paid? $10 per contract, so $1,000. So whatever they got paid, I can't imagine when they did that, Amazon. So you weren't in my room, that's for sure, because I was not the one saying to go along Amazon at the time. Okay, so they must have sold it when Amazon was up here, and then Amazon fell apart. So here's what, if you guys don't know what selling a put is, let me go through it real quick. Okay, so um, let's look at the same platform for September. Amazon currently is $104, right? $104. Um, so somebody is freaked out about Amazon. Somebody that owns the Amazon stock is freaked out and they want out. And I'm looking to get long Amazon and I want in. So they're freaked out. They want insurance. I want in. I want to grab 100 shares from somebody. We come to an agreement. How? I go in here. I, I look at I look at Amazon. I was like, man, that is scary looking uh, platform here. So if they lose this, they're going to drop to like here. Uh, let me see. Is there support? Ooh, that's pretty far back. Gosh, darn it. I wish I can buy it lower. How low? Well, that looks good. That's 100. That looks good. That's 82. So somewhere between 185, I'm, I'll be good if I enter by then. So what do I do? I flip to the, the uh, platform. Um, so I can go to 90 and what happens? I sell it, I go sell it. So what does that mean? I am not recommending a trade like this, especially if you don't know what you're doing. I'm just debating this concept of somebody selling that put. So what does that mean? Whoever is nervous about their company, about owning shares right now says, I want out. I'm saying I'm a buyer at 90, anybody? Somebody says, oh, perfect, I'll take it. How much do I owe you? They'll pay me almost $500. I'm going to round for easy math, $500 today. For me to say I'm yours at $90 per share on Amazon, 100 per contract. So if I sell one, I committed to buying 100 shares here. So what happened if Amazon falls? If Amazon falls, they're sleeping nicely knowing that they have a buyer guaranteed at 90. Um, and a novice put seller will get nervous. Oh my God, now, now I'm down 100% because now this is $900 or $1,000. I'm down you know, thousands of percent. It doesn't matter what you're down. If you really wanted to buy the shares, you wouldn't sweat it one bit. The worst case scenario is somewhere between now and September, you wake up and you own shares at 90. So what's the damage? No damage. You own the shares, your break even is 85. Why? Because you, you collected $5 to get in. So you bailed somebody out because they wanted panicked uh, at 90. You said, I got you. They're out of their shares at 90. They don't take back the money they paid you. That's the premium you collected. 
Now you buy the shares and you wake up, they're in your account. What else is not in your account? This position, gone. All of its losses, paper losses, gone. They didn't materialize because didn't, you, you didn't panic. You didn't panic and buy it back, gone. So what do you keep? The 500 bucks and the shares. So you break even at 85. So if we look at the chart, so me being long at 85 Amazon, and then I start losing there, that's a good uh, compromise. So that's selling a put. So the scenario that somebody is asking is they sold it way up here. I think you said 121. Well, now it's two grand per contract. The other one was 500. Why is this one two grand? Because price is well below it. Price is well below it. So this person is stuck buying at 121. So they are forced to own it at 121. So if they wake up owning shares, the cost basis is here. I don't know how much they collected. I'm going to assume $10. So that's $1,000. So their break-even point is 112. So it's not the end of the world. They're down $10 per share. It's not great, but it's not the end of the world. This is a full-blown correction, uh, 9%, 10% in three days. That's amazing. So that's the scenario they're in. And I think they're asking what they can do about it. If the Correct. <laughs> they were asking about whether they should buy it back or roll it to okay. a future date. So since you're, you waited this long, uh, nine, five. Okay. Enrique, thank you for sharing. I think you're saying you're answering to me. So I was close with the $10. If that was really the person in there, that is amazing guess on my, on my part. But yeah, that's pretty freaking amazing. So Enrique, uh, not the end of the world. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've been in this situation before. Google comes to mind. Uh, and I was on vacation. So I punted it to high heaven. What does that mean? I was like, I don't have time to deal with this. I, I rolled it down and out, way out and uh, dealt with it. So in this case, I would do nothing right now. So because September is the time, I could get assigned between now and then. Uh, that's a risk I will take. So A, I would definitely try to stop the bleeding somehow. And how would, how would I do that? Any put position, I don't want to overpay, but any put position will stop the bleeding. Even a put spread will stop the bleeding. What does that mean? I bet against myself shorter in time. So I go to July and I buy a debit put spread below current price. So if I buy a debit put spread here, for example, uh, what is a debit put spread? I buy a put, it costs $500. That's a lot of money. So I go down here and I sell a put, I collect $300. So now I'm only spending $150. Uh, what happens for every contract I do this for, and let's say Amazon collapses to 95, I now can make $350. So it offsets some of the losses I have out there. It's not perfect protection because it's limited. I can only make $350 per contract. So, um, and I have 32 days worth of peace of mind to a degree. If I did this, just bought the put, I would make a hell of a lot more if it crashes but I would lose very fast if it doesn't crash. Um, it looks like I picked a good level, a lot of activity today. So that is one way. I can buy myself some protection while I wait in my stupid position out there. Now let's go back to my stupid position out there. So if I wanted to roll it out, the simple way is just to roll it down and out. And I'll see if I can exp uh, explain it to you. I'll um, go down to 12 and go to 120. Okay, and uh, the simple rolling is, it really means uh, close it and reopen it somewhere else. But there isn't a 121, so I'll go to 120. Notice, so here I had sold this to open the risk. That's what Enrique did. They sold the put, they collected $10, and now it's worth $20. So if they wanted to close the position, they're booking a $10 loss per contract. Again, not the end of the world, but it is a loss nonetheless. But Enrico still, that's important. If Enrique still believes in the trade itself, if they still believed in the trade itself, then, and they wanted just more time on the clock, what I would like to do is roll it out in time from 95 days to 130 days. Like I said, that's too early. Usually I'm rolling from like two weeks to a month. <laughs> so in this case, nevertheless, this is how rolling works. You close it. You buy to close the original position because he had sold it to open it before. And you sell the open, sell the open one period out if you want. In this case, the next one is available is October. Notice the cost is a small debit. This will cost like $30 to do. 
So what happened? Enrique keeps his $10 credit net from the other one that he sold it originally. Now he gave back 35 cents to make this happen. And now Enrique has 30 extra days and uh, $1 less. So he's now his commitment is down at 120. So now Enrique could have done this. I want to commit 105. Well, now he has to pay back his $10. See this? So if he does that, that's still viable. So it means he punted his, he gave himself more time and he brought himself almost to current price. So then he doesn't have any more buffer because he's paying 900 to get it done, almost a thousand, almost all of what he collected to open the original trade. But now he bought himself 30 days and brought it down to a lower level. So now he's committed to buy Amazon at 105 ish. So his break even is here somewhere. Same thing, whether his break even is here or not, is whether he decides to keep that ten dollar in his pocket and not, or, or, uh, you know, if if you anticipate that Amazon's going to rally back, this is what I would do. If I anticipate that Amazon is might stall and be stuck where it's at, this is what I would do. Somewhere in the middle works, so you give back say three hundred dollars and you lower your you better your cause six dollars. Hopefully, this makes sense. Does this make sense, Enrique? Do you get the wrapped up, the, the picture? Okay. Now, some people will try to get cute with it and start selling calls because I'm going to get assigned. But the thing is, if you don't get assigned, you're short the stock. You can't force an assignment on yourself. So you can't tell them uh, to, I'm going to save this just in case we need to reuse it. Since you sold this put, you can't tell them, hey, I sold this put. Can you give me my shares? No, the buyer is in control. Whoever bought this put decides whether they can uh, assign you or not. I can tell you from experience that they don't always assign. I had um, one scenario with uh, US Steel, the letter X. I sold a $9 put. It went to under five. They never assigned me. And I made money on the trade. I keep mentioning it because it was the most flabbergasting scenario ever. And I did have a protective put that made me a lot of money. And then I sold it. And then the stock rallied almost back to even, and I bought back my risk for its slight loss, but the win from the protective put was massive. So whatever you do, if you're still nervous about the stock market, it doesn't hurt to buy yourself some protection. You're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to give back $150, $150 per contract. It's nothing. And you can make it last more than July. I mean, I picked July, but you could have picked something out in time. The spread will cost the same. Uh, somewhere, a spread that's close to current price will cost about the same. Now, tomorrow, a week, a month, three months, a year from now will cost about the same. Uh, so uh, it won't gain as fast. So you don't want it too far out. Then you defeat the purpose because you're only long in September. So you want something that wins faster for you in case there's trouble. So you can jump into your September thing and move it. Now, what's the nuclear thing? So you could, you, you, you're down at... Um, you're you're welcome. You're down. You're you're committed to 121, right? And it's twenty dollars. What if I go to March of 2023? Uh, twenty dollars is one here. It's not worth it. So I've done that with Google, and there was like such a differential to where I went down to here, and I sold the the one out in March. This way, I kind of told myself I don't want to even look at it for now, and then I went ahead and came here and bought a, a cheap put here. But in this case, it doesn't work because I'm going to March of 2023, March of next year, and I still don't see 20 bucks anywhere below current price. So not worth it. All right, so that is a in-depth look at Enrique's um, issue. Now, somebody else had a question. I can't remember what it is. I think the first person to comment on YouTube is Herbert. Um, and he says, I'm long the short queues 52 calls for June 24th expiration. How would you trade out of this position? Uh, so he's winning. See, is this the one S, short, short S, queues? S -Q -Q -Q? S -Q -Q -Q, 52 calls for June 24th. Oh, so he's party at his house. Is what, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Uh, dang. Yeah, well, this ticker is very difficult to game with spreads. What do I mean? Uh, the one time I did spreads on it, it was just lunatic. They don't give you a good quote. You can't get a good fill. So this person is looking for a uh, attaboy. Uh, you got it. You got it. So if, if they're long a call here, 
that means they bought it and then the market's corrected. So the call they own, they were short the market by owning calls in this short market a ticker that is leveraged three times. So every drop in the market, like today, it's up 13% when the market was down, whatever it was down, three and a half. So it's three times as much. Now, how do you get out of it? You book your profits, period and simple. If this was a different ticker, I would say you can sell a call this way and a sell a call that way, book it. And if you're still bearish the market, use some of that money to reopen another one, not to the same extent, because you got a big win. Don't forget to uh, not be as committed. I forgot to put the sign on the door. Uh, so it, it is, it's important to not leave money on the table. Don't let it expire in the money. Okay. So even though you bought it and you think you're in control, when it expires in the money, the person that sold it will be exercised on. So this, the, then they will, um, you're the other side of that equation. So, whoops, sorry about that. So you will wake up actually owning shares. I don't know. Is it a deliverable? I think so. So I would not let it expire the money. Book your profit. Good job. You can roll it. What does that mean? You book it and you open something else <laughs> that could also participate. But make sure that you know you're, uh, you have the same reason. Like the first question of how to manage. I had a, you know, this pro habits. Um, let's see here. Nope. Nope. Where is it? Okay, this one. So the first thing, how do you level up your game? You don't take trades without purpose. So if you don't know uh, what is why you're in it, then you shouldn't take it. So if you can't tell me why you bought it or why you're buying it again, you shouldn't take it. So have a reason. So visit, revisit the reason of you buying this. You, it played out perfectly. Take the money and run and redeploy another one just like it with more time on the clock. Because this is a three-time leverage. One good day in the market could ruin your trade, really. Um, so... All right, so let's see here. You mentioned something about somebody having a hard time filling something on Robinhood. I mean, you you covered the spread, you know. So as you were talking about the Amazon trade, they're basically just asking how to execute your credit put spreads. Okay, so uh, we can go to Apple because that would be a sane ticker. Actually, I did mention a, a Tesla spread. Okay, and I mentioned July 1st. Okay, so let's say I picked, so this is current price. Tesla is 647 at the close today. And um, first of all, I'm looking at this right now and it looks like they wanna move it about a hundred bucks, just under 95 to a hundred dollars. What does that mean? The market maker expects a hundred dollars plus or minus. And they're pricing the options based on that. What does that mean? If we assume that they sell the call and the put to make that happen, like if you go out, buy a put, if somebody goes to buy a put right now at 645, they buy it from someone. If they buy a call, they buy it from someone. Well, that someone, I will assume that they're a market maker and they know what they're doing. So they're collecting $100. So as long as price dies within $100, they make money or break even. If price goes beyond that and dies by ex on expiration in 18 days, they lose money. Simple. So anything below that $100 should be, quote, safe uh, if you wanted to sell a credit spread. Well, in this case, I, I said I would even go closer. So I said I would be willing to go here. Usually I look for a low delta. So let's go um, with my non-low delta uh, approach. So we'll go with this one for illustrative purposes. So in this case, I sell a put and that opens risk. I buy a put below it, and that limits my risk. And let me put words to it. Remember the comment I said, okay, somebody has a uh, stock and they're nervous about it. I think it was whatever stock we did. And then uh, somebody, uh, Amazon, and somebody said, oh, I would love to own it down there. So somebody has stock now and they're nervous about it at 645. They want to buy insurance. They're okay losing down to 560. You say, oh, I got you. Um, they give you $1,800 per contract. Yes, $1,800 per contract. So they can, you are on the hook to buying Tesla shares at 560. 
and you're on the hook to uh, suffer the consequences from here to zero. You say, oh, man, the VIX is 30 something, 34. I can't do that. So let me go back and protect myself. And I buy the same thing below me. So I collect 1800, I spend 1700, I net a dollar 10, let's round a dollar in credit. So if I do one, I collect a hundred dollars, I'm risking $400. Um, I, this way, I don't need a lot of margin. That's all I need. $400 is my maximum loss. You're saying, Nick, you're, you're risking hundred to make 400. That's 25% risk on my money. So let's say I did three or 10. Let's say I did 10. I am not recommending this as a trade, okay? This is a little bit more aggressive than my taste is. Let's say I did 10. I'm collecting a thousand bucks today. So I'm risking $4,000. Let's word it differently. If I told you there's a stock you can buy for $4,000 today that will deliver a 25% rally equivalent without meeting a rally and it even can fall 15% and you can still win. Is that attractive? Because that's what this is. This is... This will deliver a thousand bucks on a risk of four thousand, and will pay you up front and take it back if need be. Otherwise, the thing dies in your favor, and um, so you get the equivalent of twenty-five percent rally without needing a rally in eighteen days. Um, I don't think there are many stocks that give you that certainty. A a twenty-five percent rally in eighteen days with certainty of eighty percent. There's not many of them. So are you guys and gals following this? This is this is a huge deal. Let us know in the chat. Give us a why for yes if you understand what Nick is saying and N for no. Like you have to come away from this session understanding this concept. Eric says no. I'll try. <laughs> no, Boris says no. Boris only one time, Boris. Uh, Satish, <laughs> yes. Boris is skewing the results. I'm gonna right. kick you out, Boris. <laughs> 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 Bo Robert, Boris, Norman, Boris has been throwing like 20 different tickets Lance, in there. Deck, Boris, yes, he changed his mind. Now he gets it. Okay, I'll get that, Enrique. Thank you. You're still learning. That's fine. That's the question. So I, I, I can delve into it. I'll, I'll say them differently. Very straightforward for some people, not so straightforward for other people. Okay. <laughs> First timer, Robert. Ooh, you jump into the deep end of the pool, Robert. Stick with me. <laughs> Hello, James. <laughs> okay. 15.15. The one I sell. I want 85% chance in my favor, thereabouts. Okay. So the, the trade has two things in it. One opens risk. Anytime in options, when I sell something, I open risk. I'm on the hook. I promise somebody something somewhere. If I sell a put, I'm promising somebody I would buy their shares. Like earlier, I showed you with Amazon. If I sold you a put on Apple uh, below current price, let's say wherever Apple is, let's say at $100. I don't even know where it is right now. 130 then that means that whatever happens between now and the expiration of that contract that you and I agreed on, you have the right to stick me with Apple shares at $100 and price can be anywhere it is. It'd be, it'd be stupid for you to give them to me unless price was below, but you can do it at any point in time, even after the expiration of the contract into 5.30 in the evening, you can still exercise on me. So when I sell something, I'm on the hook. I'm promising somebody something. In this case, I'm thinking about selling the $560 put on Tesla. So that puts me on the hook for Tesla stock at 560. What does it mean? I do this and say, hey, anybody take any takers? I want to sell this put and collect $1,800. Somebody will say, yep, I got you. I need insurance on Tesla at 560. So what happens? I promise somebody that will buy their shares at 560. And I am stuck from here on down. <laughs> um, so how do I level out that huge, um, big potential drawdown? So I would do the opposite below. So I collect $1,800 per contract here, but I don't want that headache. I want to stop the bleeding at $5 lower. So I'm on the hook for somebody to buy their shares of 560. I get below and I get uh, somebody to give me the same promise below. So I'm on the hook because this creates risk. 
I'm off the hook because I'm paying back 1700 of the 1800. So now I'm only collecting hundred dollars per contract, but that uh, makes the risk finite. I can go to sleep knowing that I'm only risking $1, uh, $4 per contract, not to, from here to zero. I mean, I don't know what happens. Something happens to Elon Musk, the stock is gonna get obliterated. It's not the scenario of where this is Steve Jobs. Apple can still roll without Steve Jobs. I don't think anybody can do what Elon Musk is, has been able to do. And I'm not a big fan. I'm just saying it's fact. <laughs> so he fakes it until he makes it. And then now he's got a big monster money-making machine on his hands. So um, I this is the risk. Sell a call, a put that opens my risk. I buy a put below it that limits my risk. The two I can do on one order. And they result in a $1 credit because one I sell is 18, the other one is 17. That is a vertical spread. Correct, Craig. Vertical spread. It's called a spread because you're spreading your risk. It's called vertical because it goes up and down. There are some spreads that cross time. Those will be uh, calendars or diagonals. So in this case, very simple, vertical spread. I call them credit bull spreads their credit spreads and it's a put so it's a bullish spread it's also called a bull put spread why is it bullish it doesn't need a rally to win but a crash would make it lose so let's walk through how does it win if you get a rally you win how much hundred dollars for contract if you don't get a rally you win how much a hundred dollars for contract if you drop a little bit you win how much a hundred dollars for contract if it rallies to the moon how much you win $100 per contract. If it falls 15%, maybe you lose. Then you have to deal with it. And how much do you lose? $4 per contract. So um, that's the scenario. Only one scenario blows you out. A complete collapse. Collapse. A complete crash through my levels. Um, the rest wins. So if I buy shares, I need a rally to win. Time is not important. I can sit on them forever. If I buy calls, I need a rally to win. Time is extremely important, especially when I'm buying calls when the VIX is 34. Don't do that. Don't do that. Everything is so expensive. Uh, call spreads, I need a rally to win. Time is also important. The high VIX doesn't matter because I'm buying something expensive, selling something expensive. It doesn't matter. So this is the only setup where I don't need a rally to win. In fact, the stock can fall and I don't mind. So this is a calculated risk. This way I can put my head on the, on the pillow and pass out every night. I don't think about it. I'm not sweating it. Last night I saw the, the stocks were down a dollar, 1.8%. Uh, no issues. I know exactly what's at risk. It's complicated to set up and keep up with the details. Uh, well, it's not easy <laughs> because you have to pay attention to your trades. It's not like you buy a call and you sell it later or you buy shares and you sell it later. I think um, this is a good opportunity to maybe explain how you do a lot of the homework for people in your group. Is this a good time for me to hop in here? Yes, uh, I'll show you. I brought it so I can show you, but you Boom, can go baby. ahead and hop in. Hop in. <laughs> so what, what Nick- so I can tell you one thing that Boris was faking. He knows his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, something weird is going on. So what's funny, we also have a marketing guy named Boris and there's like 60 people in here right now with the name Boris. So, uh, <laughs> so I don't know if a list got uploaded or whatever, but uh, <laughs> hopefully all the Borises in here make money with uh, with some of what they're learning today. Um, anyways, what, what we're talking about here, I threw some links in the chat and it's in the description. Um, we have Nick Shaheen's mentorship program. And what you're seeing in front of you is he covered 130 different companies on Sunday morning. And he does this every single Sunday morning, 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern time. And all of these companies have the charts with his lines, his notes. You can see right here, he's, he's telling you right here, I am short, XOM. And then if there is a trade that he would consider, <laughs> I like it how he also notates credit put spread potential like there with uh, what is that WBA. He'll tell you, he'll give you some ideas of how he might consider to structure a trade 
on some of those as well. And you can request tickers for him to review every Friday or Saturday night. That way, uh, that'll be included in the live session on Sunday morning. So for all of you who work a full-time job like I do, I work for Benzinga. I don't have time to day trade every day, all day. I can still benefit from Nick's program because he does so much work. He does like six hours of homework for me every weekend. And then I can just watch that video or cherry pick through this spreadsheet and evaluate some of those, uh, some of those companies that he's already done the homework for me on. So on the weekends, you can set all of your alert levels. Um, you'll, you'll know your battle plan ahead of time. And then throughout the week, you can just tune in on your lunch breaks or 15 to 30 minutes a day to adjust your trades. Or you could also ask Nick questions within the chat room. That brings us to point number two. Every single trading day, Nick is in there at least nine hours a day from like 8.45 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. And he posts a link every single morning for you to see his screen. So he's got the 30 second or 15 second candlesticks for day trading. They're also discussing those swing trades from the weekends. So you, you have someone, that someone is Nick, guiding you along throughout the week and saying, hey, here are some levels you should pay attention to, some expiration dates that you should pay attention to. And that way you can be more profitable and, and get started on the right foot or just add another, basically reduce your research time because Nick is doing so much work for, for his group. So um, yeah, that's, I just want to let you know about how you could trade with Nick. Also today we have a special deal is 40% off the whole year. So that'll save you like 1600 bucks off of the normal price and we'll mail you a free laptop. So let me know if you have any questions on that. That's my spiel back to Nick because he's, he's the one that knows what he's talking about. I just remember somebody asked me on Sunday to do a uh, credit put spread on target and I forgot, but I don't think there is a rush. So I will do that for her this afternoon. That is somebody I met on the street. I kid you not. She says, you're the Benzinga guy. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's awesome. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. So I will get back to her. Uh, so anyway, this is during the day. I tracked the price action after we dropped uh, live minute by minute. And I kept updating it. So every ledge you see here was drawn one at a time. So I said, okay, so now for the next few minutes, this is the range. Um, they will try to do this. They will try to do that. Just chase the range. And then we moved it. And then when we got to here, I said, we're going to bounce. And if we bounce, we're going to see resistance. And if we do, we're going to come down to here. And if you followed uh, the, the, I also drew another arrow. And then that's what exactly the market did. Not because I know what the market is going to do. It's because that's what the forecast. If, if you just know charts a little bit, then you avoid the stupid mistakes. Um, so look, see that red, see that was the yellow. It came to fruition. They consolidated down here. They have a couple of folks that were bear traps. And then, but I had drawn the red thing and they followed the red thing and done some. And then I said, there's this, but I don't think it happens. And I said, finally, in the, at the end of the day, I said, I think they want to close at 377, no, 375. And they closed 375 and a penny or seven pennies or 374.9 or something like that because of the open interest and the volume that was coming in. So we tracked that stuff. So let me tell you why. Yes, okay, Ahmed, uh, how do you apply it? So give me uh, a little confusing. Okay. So I'll try to write them up clearly. I just don't know. Have you ever, okay, somebody's asking, how do I apply it? So Ahmad, have you seen the videos that go with the credit spreads? This week, I haven't done a video yet. Uh, but usually every spread when I do on a normal day comes out with a 15 minute video. Have you ever caught the videos that go with them? I wouldn't take a trade without watching the video. If there's a video with it, that means I have specific things to look for. And I usually do the same thing with what I just did with that uh, trade. So Ahmad, I encourage you to watch the video next time and I'll walk you through how I would say the video. Right, this week I said, I shared one and it was a no brainer trade because this is a violent market. I am not about to throw you to the wolves. 
uh, this week, there was no video today. There was no video. So here is the video, okay? So check it out. Ahmed, listen to this. Pay attention. Okay, you, you too, Ting. So this is a video that goes out with a trade alert. Let's say this was a trade alert I'm writing up today, okay? So I would say... <clears throat> Um, all right, checking in. I usually say the scoreboard on the market. I'll say, okay, we're weak, but the bulls are trying to make a comeback, blah, blah, blah. But overall, the bears are in charge, so you should look out and sell rallies. Like I started with you here. I said, if we get a rally, sell it. Uh, don't assume it's going to continue until they can prove it, that they can have sustainability. Okay. Then I'll say, today I want to focus on Tesla because X, Y, Z. In this case, today I focused on Tesla because somebody asked me about it. So uh, they said, what would you do with Tesla? I said, okay, so I would do this and I would leave room for error and I would make it a small bet. And I said, I would go down and sell a put spread. So, and the way to do a put spread, the position, the order has two things in it. Uh, you don't have to do them in the same order, but I strongly recommend that you do them in the same order. And uh, I would, in this case, if this was live, I would do this one, not more aggressive. In fact, normally I would go to, to here and collect. Wow, that's amazing. Maybe that's because the market's closed. That shouldn't pay that much. Let's say it does. So the order would be, I'm today I'm going long Tesla because the fundamentals are fine. This correction is based on overall rhetoric from the markets. And maybe it stabilizes this week. Maybe it doesn't. So I want to leave room for error. So I want to put it in a place where I know if I get heat on it, I, may, I will be able to manage it. And I usually say, I will stop out if I get uh, the, the sold delta, which I'll share with you in a second, too high. That means my odds of uh, success drop. So I would then, to uh, that would be one gauge for people. Say, oh, if it's now almost a coin flip, I don't want to be in it. Or if I lost X percent. Uh, sometimes, most times, I don't get scared away from credit put spreads, especially if it's a quality stock that I don't mind owning for a little bit because I know I can always defend it by taking shares. Okay, so that would be the setup. And how I would do it is uh, depends on your platform. My platform, this platform, allows you to open in one ticket, sell a put, and buy a put in one ticket. And the middle between bid and ask, I don't care what bid is, what ask is, this is a liquid stock. It usually fills in the middle between bid and ask. Uh, it's a credit, and I would uh, just simply take the position that way. And if it doesn't fill at 82, I would drop it a penny, and it usually fills. If not, I'll drop it two pennies, it usually fills. What does that mean? I'm giving up a couple of pennies to make that thing happen. And that is the trade. Credit put spread on, on Tesla. So Enrique, this is very interesting. If the trade goes south, like a put spread on Tesla, how would I manage to fix it? Okay, so wait, let me go back to the person that asked, Ahmad, is this clear? Because that's usually my video. And I usually say, if it was me and I can buy shares, I would sell this put naked, meaning I don't buy the protection. In this environment, you will not hear me say that. Not a good idea. Always start protected. If after the fact you feel comfortable, you can sell the protection put and pocket more money. But for now, credit put spreads are better than sold puts. This way, you reserve a lot less uh, premium. And if something goes wrong, if the markets crash, they could crash. And I mean crash, not drop 10%. Crash. Have you been in a market that drops 20% in a day? No. Yeah. Well, it's something else. So um, it happens. Not often, thank God. But it is a, that's a one way of limiting your maximum loss. So start with a credit put spread. And this is called a credit put spread, bull put spread. It's a vertical debit spread. I mean, sorry, credit spread. It's a vertical spread of the put kind, um, and it results in a credit. So it's a credit put spread. Some people call them bull put spread. I like to use the word credit because then when I look at the order, it says credit. I'm, I'm golden. I know exactly what I'm talking about. So that would be the entry point of that spread. And if you wanted to see it visually, It would look like this. I'm buying. Um, oh, come on, seriously. I'm 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 buying the protection leg at 525. I'm selling the risk leg at 530. So what do I need to win? I need price to die before 530, 
uh, above 530 in 18 days. So in 18 days, when this expires, I need price to be at or above 530. And this dies for zero in my favor. Somebody that paid $80 for it uh, will lose. So I basically am trying to sell a losing lottery ticket for somebody who's super bearish Tesla. By the way, I can do the same thing for somebody who's super bullish Tesla by selling them a call spread. And then that would be a iron condor. Uh, so I can double my potential income, but now I can lose on both ends. I don't like to sell a call spread this late in the game because I feel like I'm selling it too cheaply. Uh, I would never sell calls, Boris, because I don't trust uh, trolls out there. Uh, because when you sell a call, you are short of stock at a certain level and you're at the mercy of the price action and you have no control and your risk profile goes to infinity. Yep, infinity. Oh, you can put a stop loss. It may or may not fill. Uh, so I would never put my family's livelihood in the hands of uh, thugs out there. So no, I, I would strongly discourage you from selling calls um, without any reason. I mean, covered calls, fine. Uh, naked calls, absolutely not. Okay, so somebody says it looks different. Uh, so Ahmed, I don't know what Webull looks like. So I'm pretty sure they have a way of doing it. Um, practice. Do they have a practice account on Webull? Maybe they do, like a paper trading account. Maybe you jump in there, take a couple of practice sessions there. And whenever you're ready, the best way to practice is to only use one contract. And if you do, then you make 100, you lose 400. And it's a relatively cheap lesson to make. I mean, 400 is not a cheap by any means, uh, but it is definitely cheaper than going in with 10 contracts. Uh, so um, that is the one question. How do I enter? That's how you, you sell a leg, you open risk, you buy a leg below it, you limit your risk, the, you end up with a credit that you got yourself a credit plus spread. Now, if somebody's bearish and they flip the signs, they ended up paying for what I'm selling buyer seller buyer seller so what does the buyer need the buyer needs a drop to win how much a big drop to win by what time by 18 days what does the seller need to win nothing they need time to tick and get off the board that's it they should be boring now normally i collect 55 cents 60 to 50 cents so this will be my speed down here 505 yep i'm chicken i fight for a sport every saturday i go fight big people um you know uh, and I don't, I, I'm not as aggressive in, in, uh, in uh, money stuff. I want boring, boring, boring stuff. So that would be the boring stuff. Look at the Delta. Okay. Speaking of deltas, somebody asked me, how do I defend and what, how do I manage? Uh, this has a lot to do with it. So let's talk, let's walk back. What is a Delta? I'm going to go to Apple to explain the Delta. It's not as And really quick, uh, G Bentley, if you're still here on YouTube, G Bentley, uh, the reward is not worth the risk, question mark. This is, this is the answer to your question. So yeah, uh, yeah, this is real. This part right here, this is key. For anyone who's new to credit put spreads, options in general, pay attention right now. Get out your pen and paper. So the reward is not, so somebody would say, oh, you're collecting $50 to, and, uh, and you're risking $450. Again, I have a trade that, that pays 12% with 90% certainty. In, in five days, in one day, sometimes in one day, I'll share a trade today that made us 25% in 30 minutes. And you didn't need anything to win. And it's not a credit spread. Can you think of one? I'll give you time. It involves the SPX, specific the SPX. Okay, 30 minutes, 25%, 20 to 25%, no rally needed, and it's not a credit spread. Okay, think about it for a second. Meanwhile, I'll explain how I use the delta. Um, so the, the fact is the definitions of options are wonky. You can go out there and read them. And, um, and what... You, you get is a whole bunch of gibberish that is not practical. I'm going to give you the simplest explanation on the delta. You can go read the definition. The definition is something like uh, the change in the price of the option based on the $1 movement in the price of the underlying, something like that. So that is weird because that doesn't tell me how I use it. I'm going to tell you the definition of it and you tell me how you use it. 
It's the odds maker, period, end of story. It's my odds of success or losses. I'll give you an example. Currently, uh, Apple is 132. Apple is 132. So price is here somewhere, right? And if I, this is, this is the Delta column right there. Uh, we have two, one on the put side, one on the call side. We can collapse this one. We don't need it right now. Okay, so current price, delta column, and delta column. So the delta column on the put side has a negative sign. Ignore it for now. I'll explain it to you later. Uh, so price is right here. So if I buy a call, if I buy shares, my options are 50, my, uh, my odds of success are 50-50. Mathematically, it can go up and go down. And go down. I can win or lose. Um, I think I give myself a uh, reason, like a, a 60 40 because i do homework and i know that blah 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 blah. you might have a reason in your head so you assign yourself an odds of success but it's really 50 50. if you buy a call same thing if you buy a put same thing the buyer and the seller of that put and the call at current price are at even keel nobody has an, a mathematical advantage either of them can do as well as the other right i'm of the mindset where if i'm going to take the risk I want to put the odds in my favor. I want to cheat. I want to be the casino. I want to put the odds in my favor. So what do I do? Uh, instead of buying something, which is easier to figure out where Apple's going or where Apple's not likely to go? I think I can tell you that with better certainty that Apple is not going to be 110 in uh, 32 days. Better than uh, Apple is going to be at 145 in 32 days. I have more certainty that it's not going to be below 110 than it's going to be 145 or at 145. So instead of going out and buying this thing here, I'd rather go here and sell this thing here. Uh, where is it? 110. So this delta is low. So that means my odds to win are high. Let me word it differently. So this is a 50-50 delta current price on the put side. Let's, let's go to the call side and explain it. All right, so what does a low delta mean? I'll go to the highest one, 170. Low delta, 0 0.02. You see that? 0 0.02, that's pretty low. So this is literally saying there is very little chance. It's pretty low. It's not even 0.2, it's 0 0.02. There's very little chance that Apple will be 170 in 32 days. It's not impossible, but there's very tiny chance. Here, there is a 50-50 chance Apple will be at 131 in the next 32 days. It's there right now. That's why it's 50-50. The odds start dropping. You see that, how they drop? Oh, now we're single digits. Whoa, that's like close to zero. This says there's very little chance. Um, yes, I do. And uh, that it will be at 170. Now, conversely, this is saying... If you, if you see here, the delta on the put side is 50-50 and it keeps dropping, dropping, dropping. There is very little chance Apple will be 95 in 32 days. Same as the other one. So these two scenarios are not likely to come. So if somebody wants to buy this 45 cent put, they have the right to, but they're hoping for a freaking miracle for that to come to fruition. But boy, if it comes, whew, the payout is big. So this is a lottery ticket for them. I want to sell them that lottery ticket. When I do homework on a stock that I like and respect, I wouldn't mind. Who minds buying Apple at $100 and getting paid for it? That's really what it would be boiled down to. So if I sell this put, not that I'm saying go sell it, to explain the concept, I would be saying to somebody, I'll buy your shares at $100 and they'll pay me for it right now. And if nothing happens, nothing happens. I just made money out of thin air. So um, that's the Delta version. And how do I manage my risk? When I, when I sell my positions, I require a low delta, 0.15 is maximum. So that makes me humble in my asking. The difference between these two is about 60 cents air math. If I sell it here, I make $2.50. Nick, what, you're making only 60. Yeah, but here it's a coin flip. I might as well go down to Vegas and have fun with it. If, if my odds are a coin flip, go down, put red and even and whatever on the roulette table and drink some, some cocktails you'd have more fun. It's not investing. Uh, the only time I do this is when I know a stock has placed the bottom and I'm betting on that fact. And that's pretty rare. Usually I get more aggressive by collecting maybe a dollar, dollar 10, but most times I go for the 0.15 Delta I'm selling period. End of story. And the system works, the mathematical version of it. I mean, the reason why the, the stats are there is because they work. So 
uh, it's more more money at risk from me selling only 60 cents for example or an 80 cents but at a very um, at a much higher odds of success okay so I'm gonna back. I'm gonna back into that trade I told you about the SPX. Okay, so the SPX is gonna be probably wonky to explain, but it's I explained it live, and somebody said, uh, okay, so how can what's the lottery ticket uh, for today? Um, let me see here. It was expiration. The expiration was today, and here is the trade. So first of all, it does work, and let me see here. What is this? Oh, it's never. That, that's somebody. That's the live room, by the way. Everybody's here. That was after the market uh, uh, closed. We had 192. Uh, this was 300 during the market close last during the market uh, open session. Uh, so I thought I brought the right one. Anyway, I didn't. This is somebody giving me kudos for guessing right. By the way, I guessed up on Oracle today. So people took calls on that, not me. I'm not putting money on them so that my opinion is completely unbiased and unhindered by money. So here's the trade today. I told you that I could um, make money out of a position late in the day, half hour to go, pay me 25% and not need a rally and it be a, a not a credit spread. Did anybody guess it right? Buy and sell call and no. What are they? Nobody guessed it. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. Do I want to tell you? No. Anyway, it involves a debit spread. Uh, for example, late in the day, I looked at the open interest and the price action on the SPY, and I was confident they would close above the three, 375. As I was on Friday, I gave a number. I was confident. I don't know if it was a SPY. I think it was a SPY. As I was on Wednesday, I was confident. Um, and um, so... Me saying that I'm confident they're going to close above 375. So 3750 becomes a bottom in the SPX. So we use that data to open a trade that just needs time to, for it to go into maximum profits. And it paid 25% and it was not a credit spread. So I'm just going to leave it as a, a mystery for you to jump into the chat room and we'll talk about it. You can even turn it into a an iron condor, like without selling spreads. Yes, a mimic an iron condor. Um, it's like that movie Mimic. Have you seen it where a bug mimics a person? Uh, so um, it is it's a good movie. Um, acting like an iron condor and double ending the, the opportunity. Now, funny you should say that, Boris. Somebody in the chat room today said, couldn't we just do a broken butterfly too? I said, it could work. Let's work the numbers tomorrow. We'll see. Awesome. This has been a great session, Nick. And uh, sorry to uh, Jeevan, we didn't really get to how how we read the open interest to predict the direction, but we can definitely get to that in the chat room or maybe on our next session. Um, uh, yeah, the the I it's like a an art where you have the math. It's not um, it's not mad science. It's just pure math. And if somebody has the knack for the numbers and um, patience and discipline, they can do well with it. If somebody just flies by the seat of their pants, so to speak, they might get in trouble with it. So the thing about options, uh, they have the potential to break your account if you use them improperly. And if you use them properly in, during times where they're appropriate, then you may save yourself a lot of headache because you risk a lot less and you, the opportunity is so much uh, potentially bigger than regular stocks. So why wouldn't I want to buy shares? Uh, because calls pay you a lot more. Pick a stock that was uh, up today. <laughs> was there one? Yes, there was. Somebody picked the stock. Oh, CME, which I recommended long. CME was up today. Weird, right? So it was up 1.5%. So if somebody bought calls, they're up 100%. Well, they're, they're helped by the fact that the VIX exploded higher. So let's say they're up 30%. Let's take half of it for the VIX. So they do have leverage. So uh, you want to be right. Somebody that bought the puts was wrong, and they're down 30% on their money. Weird, I would pick 30%, and these ones are showing 30%. So that's a little loosey-goosey there. Uh, so uh, the idea is that 
we don't want to wing it when so much is on the line. Um, oh, I changed my screen. I forgot. I'm not sharing. So you don't want to go by the seat of your pants. You don't want to go on a gut. Very rarely do you want to go on a gut. So today somebody said, Oracle, what do you see? So I jumped into the, the, the options chain, look at the open interest, and more importantly, look at what happened today. There's also a couple of um, tools out there like TradyTix, and um, they do provide the same data, mind you, not new data, from different angles, and they interpret it. And twice last week, they interpreted it differently. So they said bullish or bearish, whatever they said. And I said, I disagree. And here's my, my, my feeling on that one. And they played out to my guess on their data. So I, I looked at their data and they were misreading it. So it's kind of like an art, and, but it's based on science. So the concept is not quite, but the maximum pain theory. And I, I will tell it to you in plain, simple English. The markets wants to screw everybody. How many people can I screw the most? Where can I put price to screw as many people as possible? That's what they want. And then they go for price there. That's why I told you it could not close below 377, 375 today. And it was right at 375 because there was a whole bunch of put buyers right below. If they have gone far, they would have needed to pay them. And uh, what do we say? Most options expire worthless. So be careful what you, unusual options activity. Please, please, please do your own homework and don't use the ones on TV. If you read about it on TV or on Twitter, you missed it. You are the schlep buying it from somebody else who's making profits off of you. It is easy to get it off of Benzinga. I don't know if it's basic package or not, but I know it they comes, have a filter. Yeah, it comes with your program, Nick. We just throw it in there as a part of Nick's program. So I know you can set them up in there. Um, I have tools you can leverage. I have access to tools for free that people give me to try out and I get discounts for people who want them. Um, and so we have tools we can leverage. There are people in the room that are so much better than me at other things and they're sharing their trades and levels. I have a guy who's bulletproof with Fibonacci levels. And he it's like Juju when he and I come to the same levels from me using the crayon and him using the ruler and the exact numbers. And those are unbeatable, unbeatable levels. And then I have a few other people that are great momentum traders. I'm buying puts and so-and-so out to September. Boom, made money last week. Uh, I'm buying calls in this, I'm buying puts in that. So they're not perma bears or perma bulls, they're going with the flow. If the flow is down, they'll keep going down until it stops working. So there are people posting their trades other than me. I'm long shares, I'm short shares. Um, a couple of girls that are pretty good uh, traders and they're equity traders. Um, and I have like dozens of testimonials. I don't think I need to bring it out. Um, what I do is I'm basically just trying to organize the whole thing. I'm sharing my screen live and I'm talking into the mic and everybody can contribute however they want. Um, pretty orderly room. We haven't had many issues. We have had one heckler that pops in every once in a while, but haven't seen him in a while. And um, so that's about it. 300 people, 260 to 318, I think was the highest I've seen. Um, we can be more, but people have jobs. I mean, these people are in there all day, every day. That's freaking amazing. So I'm sitting in this chair. That's why my neck hurts. I'm, that's why I'm moving my neck rest i think i need a neck brace or something oh so we anyway. appreciate all your work nick and just so everybody knows this is right here i'm inside of benzinga pro right now someone was asking is this a different chat room or something this is the options mentorship plan on benzinga pro with nick so it's the highest tier subscription and once you're in here you log into the options mentorship chat room you'll see nick's in that chat room and it looks like this every morning. So this is like yeah. a home base where you can log in to see his update for the day. And right here it says live session and you just click into that meeting and then you'll join that meeting where you can see next trades. Uh, I have to set that up again on this browser, but you can see next trades. His screen is there in front of you. You can hear his voice just like on this meeting. And then there's a separate chat room inside of that uh, live session. So people are talking about day trades, swing trades, you name it throughout the day. Yeah. And, and then if, Nick, we, uh, if we, if we, if we come up with a, um, 
um, a trade setup if it's got viability. Like the, the live room I made for fast trades, in, out, in, out. But having 300 people in there, we're definitely discussing everything, everything. So like yesterday, Friday, um, that one person about Target pops in and says, I'm looking for a trade on Target. Okay, good. Let me see if I can do it. Uh, remind me. Or I think it was Sunday. Um, remind me on Monday. And they didn't remind me. I didn't see it. Hopefully I didn't miss it. Uh, so I'm going to hit her up tomorrow and see if I can write it up. And maybe I'll share it with the rest. Target is a popular stock. Target has been demolished. Target has good management. Um, I'll do some homework and see how valuation is and see if there's room to sell a put spread on it, maybe. Um, I think that's what she specifically wanted, uh, asked for. But I will also usually in my write-up, in my video, um, set it up to where I say, okay, somebody can buy shares, they can buy calls, they can buy call spreads, they can sell a put or sell a put spreads. And here's a table with all of the parameters that I have. Uh, and I usually say, I prefer this one here and that's why. And I usually say, I will stop out if the Delta hits a certain level or if price loses a certain level, if that's the case, not always, or if I lose X percent and that's different from person to person. But the most important part is that you set your own parameters. You can, you can inherit mine, but you should act on whatever parameters you set. And, um, and then I'll write it up. It's like, okay, the focus is this type of trade for this group. Uh, I have one group that can only buy stuff, which is unfortunate because that is the worst kind of uh, investment on mine, my, my least favorite kind of investment using options, because just for the fact that most options expire worthless, knock this thing one more time, Nick, gosh, dang it, I'll raise it a little bit. Sorry about the noise. Uh, so uh, it is, it, the, the service, I try to cover the action from all angles at all speeds. That's why I did the live room. You know what ended up being? That I'm available 20 freaking four seven. That's what ended up being. I lost my life. I don't have a car. I don't need a car. I go to the gym on Saturdays and beat people up and that's about it. And I come back home and I walk my dog. So um, it, that's it. So I'm available 24 seven. I'm not sitting at the computer 24 seven, but I am sitting all day. And uh, you post a question in the chat room after hours, you get an answer whenever I see it. And uh, the chat room is static and it's open 24 seven with direct messages. If you want to, ah, you know what? I take that back. I don't know if it has it or not. Uh, but I, this, the main chat room on Benzinga Pro is always open. And yeah. then the, the live session chat room is open. Uh, as Nobody's long as there. You shouldn't be there when it's not open because right. nobody's there. Right. So I bet you if I log into it now, there'll be people there, but they shouldn't be there. <laughs> Get out of here. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> Get a life. Freak's sake. <laughs> but uh, well, thank you, Nick. And and so once again, right now, tonight through midnight Eastern time, you can get 40% off of the whole year. So that'll run you about two grand instead of 3,700. Um, so it's less than a college course and there's a full year of mentorship, uh, education and, uh, trading opportunities with Nick. Plus you get all of these other tools with Benzinga pro the scanners, the calendar tool with all of these other research capabilities, news, uh, as well as charting capabilities on Benzinga pro. So let me know if you have any questions, my email and phone number are in the chat and I'll be around after this session as well. Um, so thank you, Nick. Thanks for being here. Uh, absolutely. I appreciate the invite. Thanks for putting this together and thanks for everybody to be here. Hey, listen, the price, don't let the price be a hurdle. If you, I promise you, I haven't said that yet. I can't believe it. I promise you, I guarantee it. You will be a better trader. However, trade you, however way you trade, you will be a better trader and a better chartist. You will understand charts better. I guarantee it. And guess what? If you don't see that, they'll give you your money back. That is true. There's a seven-day money-back guarantee on all of the subscriptions. Um, so you can make sure that there's no buyer's remorse. And, and there won't be. It's, it's an awesome program uh, with a lot of quality training. I've learned so much from you personally, Nick. So I appreciate you. it. But there's no talk about uh, politics or religion in there. Today, we oof, skirted, skirted the edge of politics talking about Powell. We had to, but we try not to. All right, I'm out of here. All right. Take care, Nick. Have a great night. Later. Bye. 
All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, that was great. We covered credit spreads, how Nick thinks about the market, and hopefully you got out of today some, some tips and tricks on how you can make money even as the market goes down or goes up. So we talked about how you don't have to be right about the direction of the trade to make money when you're selling a spread. Or if you know that you want to go long with shares, you could, if you had the cash available, sell a naked put. Although we don't recommend doing that in a market that's this volatile because it will really lock up your cash. And then you can do some different combinations. Uh, it sounds fancy. So if you're, if you're new to this, don't be intimidated by words like iron condor or broken butterfly or iron bot butterfly. They're all just different combinations of the same things, which is when you're using that technical analysis and you have a clear time frame, you can leverage your capital using options while limiting your risk. And bit by bit, you can learn from Nick how to leverage your capital in the right ways with the options mentorship program. So use those links there for the 40% off. Let me know if you have any questions. Boris is asking, so you guarantee I make 3K in seven days or just that I'll be happy about the program. Boris, you will definitely be a better trader in, in a year. We're not, we're not guaranteeing that you're going to make, well, we're not even charging you three grand. We're charging you two grand. But I mean, depending on the amount of capital that you have, sure, that could happen. Um, and, and when you're paying attention to the deltas, of the um, the deltas of the option contracts, that's where you start to get a 70% win rate, 80% win rate, 90% win rate. We do lose some trades. We do lose uh, on, you know, here and there. And we're not guaranteed. This isn't a get rich quick scheme. So yes, there are day trades available on the live trading room. That can take more practice and, and takes more of a feel for, you know, getting the speed correct, the entry and exit, but then you have easier, slower swing trades. So no matter where you're at in your trading experience, you can learn and make money with Nick and you will absolutely a hundred percent become a better trader. Um, and of course, it sounds like it's zero characters, iron condors, broken butterfly. That's funny. Yeah. And, and yeah, if you're a novice, you're, there are tons of people that have been beginners or novices. And just the fact that Nick is using, you know, plain, simple English, not getting into all the technical jargon. He really does a great job of simplifying it for, so that it's approachable for everyone. Let's see here. Quantum. Thank, thanks for hopping in there for uh, Jeevan. Open interest versus volume. Yeah. And, that's a great point. So, Jivan, what Quantum's talking about here with the open interest versus volume, you can filter for these things. I don't know why I have so many workspaces open here. But you can filter for that unusual option activity on the calendar tool. So, if I go to the calendar tool on Benzinga Pro, not conference calls, unusual options activity, you can filter for these things like volume over open interest. And I could say, let's see where's volume over open interest. I could say only show me orders with a volume of over open interest of greater than 0 0.1. So that means that the that single order had to be at least one tenth of all of the contracts traded for, for that specific contract. And then you can do other things like the trade count if you wanna look for sweeps. I could say greater than 10. I don't know why I put an extra. There we go, greater than 10. And then let's see here, trade value. I could say greater than 500,000. So now I'm only looking at orders greater than half a million dollars. I could sort by that number. And here we've got a $3.5 million order on Next Era Energy. Uh, $1.9 million order on Netflix. So there's a lot that you can do in here to see those orders coming in. 
Uh, there are other types of tools that visualize it in different ways, but this is a great way to find where some of those institutions or large accounts are buying or selling a lot of contracts. Hey, Nancy, I talked to you earlier today. Um, glad, glad this was helpful for you, Nancy. Fantastic. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um, let's hear Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Yeah, I don't know. There Somehow, like 40 or 50 of you came into the Zoom meeting with the name Boris. <laughs> so that's why Boris is now a Zoom legend. Um, <laughs> so that's why we kept saying Boris. But thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. High open interest tells me people are holding their positions, but are they sellers like Nick or debit buyers? Great question, Quantum. So on, let's see, I think you can see this okay on YouTube. On Benzinga Pro, you can use something called the sentiment column. And so something to keep in mind, right, is that there's always an opposite side to the trade. So whenever there's a buyer, there's always a seller. So when we're saying that something is bullish or bearish, it's really just measuring where the trade was executed in relation to the ask or the bid. So if, if someone was trading calls and it looks like this in this situation, it's bearish for calls. So it looks like someone was selling calls more aggressively than the buyers were buying for NEE. And so this is telling you, okay, so that's bearish. The computer just tells you automatically that it was closer to the bid instead of the ask. And the expiration date here is, this it looks like a leap. So it doesn't expire until January of 2024. Um, so basically, it's a both and situation. There's always two sides to that trade, a buyer and a seller. But when we say that it's bearish or we say that it's bullish just for that one single leg, it's talking about was it executed near the bid or near the ask. So great question. Let me know if you have more questions about that quantum. Um, Boris, that the discount is good through tonight at midnight that 40% off is actually good on both the annuals and the monthlies, but the annuals give you an additional 19% on top of, that's that's before we even give you the 40% off. So it's something more like, I don't know, it's, it, it's just a lot more money off if you purchase annually. Um, so yeah, I think it's 208 a month or $2,020 per year. Does the discount link include Benzinga Trading School as well? No. The Benzinga Trading School with Mark Petrino, uh, there's other inner circle chat rooms with Matt Maley. Um, uh, Chris Capri does the, our other options school. So if you have any other questions about any of the other products with Benzinga, feel free to reach out to me. I can create a custom package for you if you want other educators or you already have another package. Um, but those other schools with other educators would, would cost additional money. We have to pay the other educators. Um, let's see here. Know anything about Ethereum 2.0 smart contracts? I'll admit I'm pretty, uh, I, I'm a beginner when it comes to a lot of the crypto technology um, so I would defer to some of my colleagues there, but we, we do have some people that are, that would know everything about Ethereum 2.0. So happy to pass along the questions there. Um, all right. I'm not seeing any other questions. Just checking. Let's see here. Looks like Mary just joined us. So welcome, Mary. Glad to have you on board. Orlando. Um, how do you say this one? I'm not going to try to say that name and mispronounce it. But awesome. It looks like about five of you joined us this evening. So glad to have you on board and welcome to the program. And then just one more time here, I'll say log in through the chat tool. I'll open the chat on Benzinga Pro. 
And then down here at the bottom, I'm navigating to Benzinga Options Mentorship. And then go to, you can see here, this is the last post from Nick. It's kind of a long one. And that's because there was a ton of action today. So he's making sure that everyone knows what to do with these different trades, um, reiterating the live uh, room that's open, and then breaking down what's going on with the Fed as well. Let's see here. Boris, if you have any, or whoever you are <laughs> with your Boris or not, if you have any questions about the laptops or anything, just shoot me an email at jonathan at benzinga.com and I can take care of the laptop stuff for you. So I don't know, did I even say that? You guys get a free laptop with this deal. So if you just use that purchase link, then you get a free laptop. I'm pretty sure it ships to the US and Canada and maybe some other countries, um, but that's a nice bonus with that, that deal. Is that Fed announcement in the morning? Well, let's take a look here. We can look at the economics calendar, look at tomorrow. And then I like this because I can filter by importance. And so this is talking about tomorrow and we've got PPI tomorrow morning. Um, and then I, I could even filter this by the country. USA. So yeah, and then I could look at today. Um, so yeah, that was, that was today actually um, with the Fed. And then tomorrow we've got the PPI. All right. And then, oh yeah, when, maybe it was Wednesday. Cool. Yeah, thanks there. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is Wednesday. There was something else that was today, but what I'm seeing does confirm. Uh, Wednesday. Let's see, after 5 p.m. Pacific time, Dave, I'm, I'm going to be out of the office probably in the next half an hour here. Um, but if you shoot me an email, then I can get back to you tomorrow or I can have someone else give you a call that works West Coast hours. So yeah, just shoot me an email, jonathan at benzinga.com or leave me a voicemail or just call me at 313-488-0294. I'll throw that into the other chat as well. All right, everyone, thank you for being here today. And uh, let's see, I'm going to switch this over to, I don't have anything else for today. All right. Well, then that will wrap it up for today. So have a great afternoon, a great evening, and we'll be in touch. Take care.